Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to is going to concentrate on uh, how to construct a 90% confidence interval for a population mean. Okay? Uh, now in this particular video we're going to assume we're going to assume uh, that the population standard deviation that the population standard deviation let's say standard deviation Okay, is known, okay, and that's important here, okay, so that the population standard deviation is known or is or that we're given a particular value uh, for that particular that particular parameter, okay, uh, because we're dealing with a confidence interval, uh, in this case, confidence interval for a population mean. Okay, uh, knowing, assuming that the population standard deviation is known, uh, the formula, okay, the formula, okay, for constructing this particular interval uh, is x bar minus z uh, times sigma over the square root of n must be less than the population mean, which must be less than x bar plus z of sigma over the square root of n. Okay, this is the formula that we're going to that we're going to uh, rely upon. But let's have a let's let's consider a scenario. Okay, so a scenario. Okay. So let's assume. Okay, uh, let's assume. Let's assume. Okay, that twenty-four cans of beer. Okay, have been randomly selected. Have been randomly selected okay, okay, from a production line okay production line okay okay uh, and that that the average fill the average fill okay of the 24 cans okay cans is let's say uh, 495 mils Okay, okay, uh, and uh, let's assume and that the let's assume that the population process standard deviation standard deviation okay is let's say let's say seven mils okay. Uh, so we're given a piece. We're given a scenario. We're after randomly selecting 24 cans of beer from a production line. Uh, we've opened up them 24 cans. We've measured the fill of each can. Uh, from those 24 measurement measurements, uh, we've calculated the mean of 24 measurements. So we're given a sample mean here of 495 mils. Uh, and also, what we know is that the population process, the process that these cans, I suppose, are generated from, the filling process, uh, has a standard deviation of seven mils. So we're given uh, some information about the standard deviation of the population. And the question that we'd like to we'd like to uh, ask, or the question that we'd like to answer, is: Can we find a lower bound? Okay, and an upper bound, okay, uh, in relation to the fill of the cans, uh, so that we'd be 90% confident that the true population fill uh, associated with this particular process will be between those two values. Now, from the formula's perspective, here's the formula here, okay, from the formula's perspective, there's a number of parameters that we require and statistics, okay. Uh, we need to know x bar. You can see on both sides of the population mean here, we need to know x bar. Uh, x bar is the sample mean, okay. In our case here, the sample mean is equal to 495, 495 mils, okay. Uh, we need to know n. The sample size, in our case here, n small n is equal to 24 because there's 24 cans. We need to know the population standard deviation sigma. So sigma, in this case, the process, uh, the process of standard deviation is seven mils. Okay, and the only other thing that we're missing are these particular z values. So we need to know we need to know z uh, that's associated with a 90 percent uh, confidence interval. Okay. So let's just think about this here, yeah. Okay, so we have everything except that we don't have this z value. Okay, so how do we calculate this particular z value? So let's just draw a little graph here. Okay, so what we'd like to be able to identify, okay, is we'd like to be able to identify, okay, 
let's say from a standard normal perspective okay uh, we'd like to be able to identify a z value over here and a z value over here okay? uh, so that I'm just going to colour in the tails here so that the area between these z values let's say z1 and z2 okay that the area between these z values is 90% of the area under the curve so we want 90% of the area under the curve to be between these two z values okay and uh, what does that mean about the tails well then that means that the tails must uh, accommodate in total the two tails must accommodate 10% of the area which means that one tail must accommodate 5% and the other tail over here must accommodate 5% of the area. Okay. So now the question is to figure out our z value that goes along with a 90% confidence interval. Okay. Uh, if I look at the standard normal distribution and the tables for the standard normal distribution, can I find a z value that has 5% of the area to the right hand side of it? Okay. And through symmetry, that will give us the z value on the left hand side here of zero of the standard normal curve. Okay, so let's just have a look at this in a little bit more detail again. Let's just concentrate on the right hand tail. Okay, so the right hand tail area. Okay, so we're just going to concentrate on the right hand tail area. Okay, uh, so what we have is we have our standard normal curve. Okay, what we know is that this z value should have 5% of the area to the right hand side of it 5% in a decimal format is 0 0.05 of the area of, of one unit should be to the right hand side of this z score uh, which means that the area to the left hand side of the z score okay, uh, should be the rest of the area under the curve which is well the total area under the curve is 1 okay so the area to the left hand side of this z score must be 1 minus the area in the tail which gives us 0 0.95 Okay, so the question now is what z score associate with the standard normal distribution has 0 0.95 of the area to the left hand side of it? Okay, well, to answer this part of the question, what we'd need to do is we'd need to actually uh, go to our tables, our z distribution tables. Okay, so we need to go to our z distribution tables. Uh, so if I go to the tables, I have a set of tables here. Okay, so we need to go to our standard normal tables. So I have a st set of standard normal tables, st tables here. Uh, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for 0 0.95 of the area, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna look in the body of the tables for 0 0.95, and I'm gonna triangulate out to the left and up to the column to figure out what is the Z score that has 0 0.95 of the area to its left-hand side. Now I'll just write these tables down here. Uh, the tables that I have, okay, have, okay, they look like this. The Z scores are all listed down here, 0 0.00, 0 0.10, 0 0.20, so on and so forth. And the second decimal place is across here, 0 0.00, right across to, uh, let's say, where are we here, 0 0.95, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, so on and so forth, okay. Now on my tables here, what I know is that under the column 0 0.04 and also under the column 0 0.05 and along the row, okay, along the row uh, 1.60, 1 1.60, okay, uh, I have the values, I have the values 0 0.9495. Okay, and 0 0.9505. Okay. Now the z-score that I require okay, is a z-score that has 0 0.95 of the area to the left-hand side. Now the z-scores that's provided that we provide in air tables here, okay, well I, I'm giving you a z-score of 1.64, the area to the left-hand side is 0 0.9495. Four nine five, and for the z score of one point six five, the area to the left of it is zero point nine five zero five. So the z score that I require, okay, uh, is a z score that has zero point nine five zero zero of the area. So I need zero point nine five zero zero, which is halfway between these two z scores, okay, or halfway between these two areas, yeah. 
you can see that 0 0.9495 is 5 units less than 0 0.9500 and 0 0.9500 is 5 units greater than it. So actually the area that I require is halfway between these two areas, okay, which is on the row 1.6 and halfway between 0 0.4, 0 0.04 and 0 0.05. So the Z score, well, the Z score for this guy here, 